Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about air independent power. So let's dive right into it. Now, first, it's basically a continuation of my submarine series. So what's the problem with this puppy? Well, the problem is the battery does not last long in a submarine. Meanwhile, even if this huge as lead acid battery, they don't last very long. So that creates a serious issue, meaning submarine has to come to what we classify as snorkel depth, meaning when a snorkel like this, this is a very old snorkel, because again, modern companies will not show you, oh, this is our current snorkel. Uh, they have to come up and they cannot just pull out a very long tube simply because it will allow them to go deep. But the tube itself will start to create a you know pattern which is very easy to detect in radars so and that's why like there is a, these are very complicated to design and that creates an issue uh, meaning even though technically you can run underwater you can't run underwater for long and the moment you come up to snorkel and you start your engine uh, you might as well be deaf at that point in time because it makes too much noise so uh, you have to basically have ludicrously advanced algorithms to like you know and very well isolated system which good luck how the heck you're gonna isolate yourself from yourself so basically your submarine becomes depth at that point. So there are serious limit to what we call the stealth weapon. It is absolutely stealth, but it is limited, meaning normal submarine uh, fielded by normal countries, generally they can stay submerged for two to three days, not for months or years that a nuclear submarine can do. Now, why does not everybody does a nuclear submarine? A, they are huge meaning if you have to survey fresh water uh, for long uh, those submarine becomes an issue they they are not agile they are not uh, they are very good for deep seas they are, that's their like you know flexing ground but the moment you have to take care of rivers uh, docks things of that nature at that point in time those submarines are like you know they are more of a hazard than uh, like you know actual asset and they are very expensive meaning if your country is not swimming in money like usa is you may be like you know what rather than building one idiotically expensive nuclear submarine what if i build three diesel power uh, you know submarines and if you have crew that is well-trained, well-oiled machine, uh, you, you can actually take on like your nuclear system. And be mindful, If even if you lose uh, the consequences of that loss, meaning on your financial budget, because again, war is always a, about game of attrition, uh, your enemy will suffer much bigger loss compared to you. So nuclear is not something that you, it's good to have but it's not something like you know one pro, uh, you know one thing that solves everything so that's why nuclear is not desirable for all and not to mention right now submarine requirements are going up simply because narcotics have been starting you you know supplied via homemade submarines i'm not joking like actual submarine made in home made in home as in like no major companies building it just people are strapping it together using it to ship material so it's it's a serious problem that's why like there are submarines in different class like freshwater submarines uh, shallow water submarines and like no why i'm saying freshwater there's shallow water submarines and deep ocean submarines so this is a serious problem meaning your stealth part is not actually stealth especially not for long so what's the solution character well solution is basically you have to provide oxygen to the fuel you already carry fuel so if you can provide oxygen that are problem solved, you can have fire. Now, best way to carry oxygen in large enough quantity is liquid oxygen format. Since, uh, and we know how to handle this and not to mention that's how rocket industry works. So it is one of those things that we know how to deal with. Then we create a big issue that is how to safely generate electricity. Meaning you may think, okay, we have uh, liquid oxygen, meaning we can turn it into gas without too much issue. Uh, what if we feed that gas into engine and just turn it on, here's the deal, your engine will catch fire. And I mean, engine itself will start burning. Why? It's not designed to run on a scenario where it has 100% pure oxygen. It's generally designed to run on atmospheric at air, which is diluted by nitrogen. 70% uh, is diluted by nitrogen. So in those sort of scenarios, engine is expecting that kind of nitrogen to act as a buffer gas. Without that buffer gas, you go full oxygen. It's like, what the hell, man? And not to mention oxidization risk also goes up. So your engine has to be able to manage oxygen, liquid oxygen directly, which many people tried, generally does not work out very well. Uh, some people also tried uh, using jet engines. Now they are far more uh, forgiving in terms of accepting pure oxygen, but they had, uh, and they also had another advantage, meaning at depth, when you have to exhaust the gas, exhaust the byproduct, byproduct is another issue. Once you have generated electricity, you have to have a stable way to vent the byproducts. Basically the byproduct should not destroy your submarine. You should be able to vent it out. Now you may think, okay, I'm just gonna vent it out. Yeah, it's not. If you open the valve and the gas is not high enough pressure, it will flow backwards. So for that reason, uh, some people figure out jet engines are very good because the exhaust pressure is very high, even though you have extracted enough energy out of it. And that allows them to discharge without having any other compression stage, which more, um, other systems do require compression stage to vent it overboard. 
So that is also a consideration. Basically, how you're going to generate electricity and how you're going to take care of the byproducts. And it should not make too much noise. Ideally, everything, uh, you know, should be absolutely silent but real world is like nah bro even if you think fuel cell even though fuel cell itself may have uh, you know no noise but what about the pumps that are circulating things around it you know air valves control valves electricity transformer noise all those jazz so it should not make too much that's the whole reality of basically if i'm replacing a with b the b must be more silent than a that's the only requirement it must not make too much sound and all options have some pros and some cons so you have to be very mindful based on your uh, military tactics you cannot just like okay i'm going to design it from engineering but it's like what does the military want what does the navy want if navy is like you know what give us something that's far more uh, capable of carrying heavy payloads you may think you know what this does not work for us we have we have to use the somebody's like you know we we have the enough oomph carrying capacity we do not need like you know 30 top torpedoes or something like that what if we want something like you know far more quiet so you may want something like that so solution so first solution uh, we use is fuel cell now it's very easy to store what we classify as liquid oxygen super easy to store but it is the main limiting factor meaning how long you can stay underwater is limited by uh, liquid oxygen and uh, liquid oxygen does have a secondary benefit meaning uh, submarines do not like unless you are talking about nuclear submarines they do not have their own uh, co2 scrubbers and oxygen generators simply because they will they have to snorkel for, uh, for power so at that point in time air will be circulated so uh, when you have liquid oxygen on board it's very easy to you know clean the air or basically provide enough oxygen into it so that's awesome there so we store liquid oxygen then how do you get hydrogen for fuel cell well you use basically oil into a reformer. Basically, a reformer is a device that uh, can burn diesel in like partial state, weird kind of state, and that reformer state creates uh, what we call um, basically hydrogen gas, carbon dioxide, uh, water vapor, and uh, basically carbon monoxide. It's almost like steam reforming of uh, basically methane for hydrogen production. Same thing only with uh, fuel oil. So you take diesel, you take liquid oxygen, you get your uh, basically hydrogen gas, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and carbon monoxide. Then you go through sifter. Sifter remo removes carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide is poisonous to fuel cell. So carbon monoxide is removed. Then it goes through a membrane filter. That membrane filter removes the remaining thing, for example, water vapor and carbon dioxide. So you have pure hydrogen at that point in time that puppy goes into your fuel cell and then you supply oxygen to the fuel cell and then you have electricity Ta -da! that's how it works now fuel cell generally you will not be stupid enough to put one large fuel cell you will have multiple stacking of fuel cells so in case of failure in case of repair maintenance and all that you will have multiple fuel cell and this is what india is developing uh, drdo is developing this puppy now the fuel cell could change for example france has a different fuel cell membrane meaning they are utilizing what we classify as proton uh, exchange membrane now it has some benefits some consequence benefit it is really efficient consequence it does not like carbon monoxide poisoning meaning if it even have a little bit of carbon monoxide poisoning oof. so that's why like this stage has to be added what drdo is doing is what we classify as phosphoric acid fuel cell now it does have some pros some cons pros it can withstand carbon monoxide poisoning to much larger extent cons i think efficiency is a bit little bit i looked into the literature but that's the whole thing that i can and again uh, the acidic environment is kind of issue you have to be very mindful around it so what does it mean for a submarine? Submarine means it goes from three day endurance to three weeks. So in case of like a war or in case of you steadily needing to sneak upon an opponent, that gives you more than enough time for a captain to be like, you know what, we can take our time. And the more, uh, you know, slowly you move, the better uh, your chances are to remain hidden. The faster you like, the quicker you do things, more likely you're going to make a mistake, more likely you are going to create a system that, you know, be detected. So that endurance is a very big deal. Now be very mindful, API, uh, generally this sort of system are not as powerful as battery. Battery is still like, you know, second most powerful source. Uh, now, why they are not powerful? Again, size limitation. You can make giant fuel cell. You can make giant, uh, uh, you know, oxygen tanks to feed those systems. But because of size constraint, generally battery is the priority. So this system is just to extend the runtime. Meaning, you have a runtime, you extend the runtime utilizing that. So if you need, like, uh, let's say you attack on someone and you need to go as fast as possible, you're gonna drain the battery first. That will allow you to gain a distance from the enemy, and then you're gonna utilize this puppy, and you will not charge the battery. That's a stupid thing to do. Again, you can do it in, if the commanders, uh, commander, I'm saying, captain decides it. But generally, it's supposed to directly feed the energy into the motors. That's far more efficient. Let's steps. That's far more efficient, and then go even further. And then you just, you know, uh, snorkel, come to snorkel there when you are outside of the enemy territory. So that's the fuel cell, uh, you know, system that is, has been utilized in uh, basically two major countries that I know, India and France. 
then we come to Sterling Engine. Now this has got a lot of attention simply because of this puppy. Now this puppy was is a NATO ally, so uh, USA did a mock trial. They do that regularly, military exercise. And this puppy literally breached every single defense sector, meaning aircraft carrier is the flagship of US Navy. So they have aircraft carrier, they have uh, backups, off backups, meaning there are uh, basically defense system on top of defense system to make sure nothing can directly just bitch slap uh, aircraft carrier. And somehow all that, even inside a like whole kafila as we call it or like you know whole squadron uh, this puppy just stealthy come up and like ta -da! it basically if it was a real war this puppy would have sank the uh, aircraft carrier flat out now let's be very clear if it was a real war and if they had actually managed to sank it uh, that, that's the whole point of uh, you know having the whole fortress around it meaning this will not come out Meaning, yeah, it would be like, you know, one submarine, one aircraft carrier kind of deal. Now, from an economics point of view, that's super awesome. This is like few million dollars versus few billion dollars. So that's a definitely, uh, from an economics point of view, really good. And it's from a scare tactics point of view, it's really awesome. So it almost bitch slapped USA into realizing it's like, whoa, whoa, we really have to improve our submarine game. So it does not require hydrogen extraction. That's the one benefit of it. So meaning it has less component to take up space benefit you can carry more payload so it does not require hydrogen uh, you know hydrogen extraction stage and it uses same engine for air and uh, you know underwater operations basically oxygen how can it do that sterling engine is a closed system meaning it does not have air going in and coming out like a, a you know jet engine what it has is basically flamethrower now that flamethrower can be fed by diesel and uh, atmospheric air or it can be by diesel and liquid oxygen it does not care that's why it can survive the directly running on liquid oxygen and atmospheric air it does not have to worry too much about it. That's why it's the same thing that works, provide power 24 into 7 in the submarine. Does not matter whether it's snorkeling or uh, like, you know, underwater. So that's really awesome. And the two major countries that are, you know, there are other countries also, but I'm just focusing on major players. Swedish, of course, uh, that's like almost scared uh, USA and China. China never is also, I'm pretty sure because of the performance of this puppy. Uh, they are like, you know what, this is a good tool. Bit slapping, you know, US as uh, like, you know, 12 uh, aircraft carrier is like, damn. And that's some serious horsepower and not to mention from an engineering point of view you want less component less component means cheaper maintenance less component so what about the overall picture overall picture is always the same balance you cannot expect one size to fit it all there are always some pros always some cons. for example fuel cell have very low noise compared to sterling engine so if you are stalked by someone who has really really good sonar uh, passive sonar specifically yeah good luck if you used uh, sterling system there you may be in a scenario where it's like i thought i am stealth but the other person like oh really bro really so that's an issue you have to know that and uh, another aspect is sterling engine is simpler you may be like you know what it's just a simple thing we can just plonk it on so you have to always balance those things and uh, biggest issue right now in this system is like how the heck you're going to provide locks in a war scenario like uh, this is all fun and games these are all developed after world war ii so how the heck you're going to use this in a war scenario because providing diesel uh, to a normal submarine in war is difficult enough let alone doing that thing when you are actually uh, you know engaged in combat that's a very big issue because a diesel freighter diesel carrier can be is you know easily manned easily uh, you know Easily, it's an easy thing. Liquid oxygen has expiry rate, meaning if this, uh, you know, submarine goes underwater, uh, its liquid oxygen starts to evaporate the moment it touches the water. At that point in time, it has like a you know, limited lifespan before, like, you know, it has to either A, uh, vent the, all the oxygen that is creating or use the oxygen. So uh, that creates a, almost like a battery that they charged on the shore and they have some time. Now, bigger the tank, the slower that uh, discharge rate would be, but still there is a discharge rate. They have to be very aware of that. So that's an issue. And Japan is like, you know what? These are all outdated. Let's go into lithium ion the reason for that is lithium ion is 5x more powerful uh, than uh, lead acid battery so what does that mean that simply means all they have to do is basically run their generators for longer to charge the batteries or have a bigger generator and that's it that's it or like uh, basically if, if they have designed a basically same submarine and they will just throw away the whole uh, aim power system and there's just like you know let's just put more lithium ion batteries and their mathematics suggests it's more or less the same system and less component the shell always have less component the less component you have the easier to maintain service repair and not to mention it does not have side effect of having liquid oxygen which has the tendency to set metals on fire so that's not there now you may like isn't lithium itself very dangerous yeah it is but it's a summary and I'm reasonably sure the engineers who are building it, uh, they may be good enough to, you know, uh, mitigate that fire hazard. It's not something that uh, should be taken lightly, but it is something that I'm reasonably sure they know how to manage it. 
and not to mention they may even have a water jacket around it so uh, that way even if one cell literally catches on fire it will not create a cascade failure cascade failure is the issue not the that fact that lithium ion can catch on fire that's not an issue it's the fact that if one goes everything else around it also goes that creates a cascade failure that's a that's the reason why car fires are so dangerous one cell going off that's like barely an issue and if you have a submarine this designed with big cells and it has like you know enough water jacket around it, it's like no matter what happens if one cell goes completely boom it's like i got this i'm gonna stay cool then it's like not an issue. So how did uh, Japan solve it? That's a different issue. Uh, but it is doable. So do not think like, oh, lithium ion is like, you know, inherently dangerous. Absolutely. But so is liquid oxygen. So balance. So this was my presentation on air independent propulsion or power. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.